challenges. So in previous videos, we had reviewed uh, information about snakes, snake bites, venom. Now we're going to be talking about the other creepy crawlies out there, like scorpions and bees and those other things that can sting you. Now, uh, Jenny, you can take us through these and tell us which ones are actually very dangerous and which ones, you know, it's not too bad, not Absolutely. too bad. Yeah. So Arizona has some unique venomous creatures that we don't have in the rest of the country and sometimes that we don't have in the rest of the world. Mm. And one of these is the bark scorpion. Uh, the scientific name is changing all the time, but right now it's Centroides exilicata. Um, and basically, the bark scorpion has a venom that causes neurotoxicity. Mm. It's not that dangerous to adults. In most adults, about 95%, it will just cause pain. And this pain can be very severe, mm. uh, but in 5% of adults and up to 25% of children, there can be a much more serious reaction. Now, we're lucky in that we do have an anti-venom available now, and it was actually just approved by the FDA uh, this year, before oh it was only available experimentally. Wow. So, there had not been a death due to bark scorpion sting in the United States for many years, I believe since the 50s. Uh, then, with anti-venom, this prevented any further deaths, and now that it's widely available, we're, mm -hmm. hoping, we're hoping that people will be doing a lot better. That's fantastic. Uh, basically, when a child or 5% of adults are stung by a scorpion, the venom affects uh, the neurotransmitters at the nerves, and it causes a myriad of symptoms, including difficulty breathing and swallowing. And that's the main way that uh, children will die from this, is if their airway becomes filled with secretions and they can't move their muscles to breathe. Sure. It also causes spasm of the muscles that can be extremely violent. It can look like a seizure. Uh, sometimes with these little babies, their arms and legs are flailing all over. It really looks like they're possessed. Yeah, um, it causes the eyes to move in what we call a disconjugate manner, so they'll be pointing in different directions and roving eye movements. Mm -hmm. uh, so most people will hold their eyes closed when this happens mm -hmm. because it's very uncomfortable. Wow. Uh, it can cause vomiting. And then it causes a severe pain due to the nerves. And this can be just in the area of the sting or it can actually radiate through the whole body. Okay. So when we didn't have anti-venom available, we would basically treat with pain medication, muscle relaxants, and often the small children would need to be placed on a ventilator to breathe for them. Now that we have anti-venom, if we can get it on board quickly enough, we can prevent the need for all of this. Okay. And it's actually miraculous to watch because you do the IV infusion and over a course of a few infusions over a few hours, mm -hmm. you'll see these children recover completely and they can actually go home from the emergency department. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's wonderful to save these children, not just from the small possibility of death, but having to spend several days in intensive care on a ventilator. Mm -hmm. So if you are stung by a scorpion, uh, if it's a very small child who's stung, I would recommend either causing poison, calling poison control immediately or even just taking them into the emergency department so that if they start to get sick quickly, you'll be protected. If it's an older child or an adult, you can usually wait to see what happens. And if they're just having some mild local pain that you can treat with over-the-counter medication, then there's no need to go to the hospital. You can call poison control where specially trained nurses and medical toxicologists are available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, uh -huh. and they can help you manage these things at home and also let you know when you need to go into the hospital. So that's definitely a good number to have on your cell phone and at home ready. Yes, in we'll case that for you. Yeah. Um, and then main symptoms you'd need to worry about and present to the hospital for would be any difficulty breathing or swallowing um, or pain that you can't control at home with over-the-counter medications. Sure. Um, so that's scorpions. We can also talk some of our other venomous creatures in Arizona. We have several different types of venomous spiders. One is the black widow spider, which is extremely ubiquitous worldwide. It can be found almost anywhere in the world uh, in some formation. There's obviously different species of it. Sure. Um, and it's an urban dwelling spider. So this one likes to coexist with people uh, and live in homes and basements and under boxes and things like that. Black widows have a very characteristic appearance. They've got the big shiny black abdomen with the red marking on it, and that's what the female looks like. Mm -hmm. The male is actually much smaller and brown, and there's controversy as to whether its fangs can even penetrate human skin. So the bite that we worry about is the bite from the female. Mm -hmm. And generally these occur if the female is trying to protect an egg sac or if the spider is threatened. Mm -hmm. So you step on a spider that's hiding in your shoe or you're digging in your garden and you disturb one. Those tend to be when bites occur. Mm -hmm. um, now sometimes someone won't even know at the time of bite that they're bitten. It may be a small pinch 
or nothing at all. So if you're sleeping and you roll over in bed onto one, you may not even notice that the bite has occurred until the venom starts to take effect. Mm -hmm. And the main symptom of black widow spider bite is severe pain and muscle spasm. And again, this can range from mild to putting a grown man in tears. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's localized mm -hmm. pain and cramping. Sometimes it can spread throughout the whole body. It can cause high blood pressure, which can be dangerous in older people with medical problems or very young children. Mm -hmm. It can cause vomiting. Uh, it can cause sweating in very strange distributions. So sometimes you're sweating all over. Sometimes you'll be sweating in little patches all over your body. Um, the mark on the skin is actually quite subtle. And a lot of times patients will come in convinced they've been bitten by a black widow because they've got a big red swollen lesion on their skin. Mm -hmm. And actually, Black widow venom doesn't have any tissue toxicity at all. So it's not like a snake bite where you're going to swell right. and blister. Yeah. It looks like either nothing or maybe a small pinpoint with what we call a tar target lesion right. where you can see a fang mark, then there's a white blanched area, and then a red area around that that looks like a halo. Mm -hmm. But this can be short-lived. It may only be there for a few hours and then it goes away. So there mm -hmm. may not be a lot of signs on the skin mm -hmm. of where you were bitten. And when someone comes in with big red swollen thing, that rules out black widow spider bite right, to me. Yeah. It's usually some kind of a skin infection that may have started with a bite or swing sting, sure. but that reaction is not caused by the venom. Okay. So what should you do if you're bitten by a black widow? Well, it's similar to scorpion. If you feel okay, you can stay home and just manage your symptoms with over-the-counter pain medications mm -hmm. and call poison control for help or any questions. Um, as with anything, these bites tend to be more dangerous in older folks or very young children. Um, and if the pain becomes intractable or you have any trouble breathing, um, then go to the hospital. We can either treat with pain medication and muscle relaxants, or there is an anti-venom available. It does have some side effects, so we don't commonly use this one, sure. but it's available if someone is having problems with their heart muscle or any other life-threatening symptom from a black widow spider bite. And that's very rare. I don't believe anyone's died from a black widow spider bite in the U.S. for many, many years. Fantastic. So we're going to do part <coughs> two, and uh, stay tuned for that, uh, that video.